Hello, I'm MC Toon. Recently, I was debating Flat Earth Street Evangelist Austin Witsit. In that debate, he kind of destroyed Flat Earth. Well, specifically, the stationariness that most Flat Earthers tend to claim. The way that he did this is by talking about both Michelson Morley and Michelson Gale. Now, these two exper experiments were done quite a few years ago that Michelson Morley was in 1887. In that experiment, they were p proposing that Earth, sorry, that light moves through ether or aether. And then that was the medium that it moved through, similar to how waves uh, through the air work or waves on the surface of water work. And they proposed that and then tested it by sending light in perpendicular directions in uh, uh, long, long paths. And they oriented this into the, the motion of the Earth's orbit around the sun. And it came back negative. That's not zero motion. That's it did not work. In the end, they figured out that Aether didn't exist. That was uh, the conclusion from that. And from that particular experiment and a whole bunch of other things, uh, Einstein proposed special relativity and general relativity, which has been empirically confirmed many times since it was first proposed. Uh, then the second experiment is Michelson-Gale or Michelson-Gale-Pearson. In that experiment, they used a similar thing where they sent light down two paths, but it went in a rectangle, a very large rectangle, a couple kilometers. And that was actually to test whether or not they could measure the rotation of the Earth using that particular setup. And they were successful. They measured the rotation of the Earth as a sine function of the latitude because it was laying flat on the surface of the Earth. So it wasn't directly um, in the, the rotation plane. So it, it as predicted on a globe, it, it measured that. Now, Austin spent most of the time trying his best to assert that Michelson Morley did measure a zero motion. And of course, he didn't say it. I know why. Maybe we'll get to that sometime. But he did not want to say that it was the aether that was the um, the reason why. And so if, here's the idea. They think that the aether exists and that the earth and the aether are both stationary at the same time. And in complete isolation of all other knowledge and observations, then then you could maybe make that hypothesis. Of course, there are many other ways to confirm that the Earth is spherical and rotating. You don't need relativity or this particular experiment at all. So that's the first thing. Aeth, they claim, Austin claims, Aether exists and uh, that Aether and Earth are stationary. That's his claim. Then Michelson Gale Pearson, or just Michelson Gale, measured a rotation in a, a different apparatus right? A rectangle and a measured rotation. And when you, when you enhance that apparatus with three planes, right? So you one, two, three, you get a 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Uh, but Bob's not the only one to measure it. Of course, it's been measured millions of times. In fact, every big airplane has not one, but three of these particular multi-plane um, measurement devices. And when they first turn on the plane, they use those to measure the latitude of the earth, both north or south of the equator. And I'll link to a, a video showing how that's done in the description. So that is measuring the rotation of the earth. And Austin agrees to that. That doesn't change anything. We don't deny this ideal rotation exists. He calls it the sidereal rotation, which is actually correct, because the sidereal rotation is not the same as, as uh, the, the, the midday to midday rotation. It's very slightly off, and that's because the Earth is orbiting the sun. He kind of, <laughs> he's shooting himself in the foot there. Anyway, he agrees that it's measuring sidereal rotation, but he claims that it's not rotation, that it's well, he wouldn't say that it was the aether. He has said it in the past. There's a vortex in the ether. What's in the center of the surface of the earth? Is this tied with the mechanism of movement in the sky? But he wouldn't, when I was talking to him, say that it was the aether. But I know 
he thinks it's the Aether. I asked him what it was, and he never really gave me anything. He skirted that topic aggressively. It to be, but okay. ideal rotation is the stars moving in the sky. Yeah, but but like, like we said, if something can't see the stars, how does the stars impact that thing? So we haven't once established again, that. <laughs> once again, it's actually detecting the motion that's connected all the way up to the okay. sky. Uh, and, now, and how here, is that here motion is, induced? Here is a Nobel Still Prize winning physicist how is that, explaining that. How's that? How's that? How's that motion induced? Okay, so there's a transfer of Can't energy answer? from the background to the material world. It's it's been uh, observed many times empirically. So, do you oh, agree okay. with that? No, I, you didn't send any uh, empirical measurements of it, so I'm gonna have to see that. Okay, send sure. them. So, send them. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. You don't know that. There, like, so quantum field theory claims, right, which is like the top tier of your paradigm, claims that there's like excitations within fields that comprise all things, okay. right, and, and that but, this becomes but, materially manifest when in a certain modality, right. So, this, some people would say like when you hit it hard enough or something, right. So, whenever it's uh, excited, it becomes materially though. manifest. This is well known. This is why people are proposing new types of gravity, right, like quantum gravity. Oh yeah. Okay. So you didn't establish the mechanism that causes things in the sky to make things not in the sky move. Still waiting for that. Yeah. So there's a there's a type of there's a source of motion which is hard to pin down. Of course, it's all the way out in space. Okay, sky. I asked about the source. I asked about how that mechanism is transferred. I'm still yeah. explaining it. Okay. So then everything is moving around, right? And this is translated through a medium. So a more dense medium of the sky, the medium of the Earth, and those are additional mediums to the background medium as well as the material. All these translate the motion, and it moves seemingly in the form of a toroid, right? Of course, and that is detected on the Earth. So that's that's that connected with the motion of the Earth. Okay, you didn't. You you still didn't tell us what what that mechanism is that causes that the transfer of motion. So you're asking me to answer a question that all of quantum field theory and quantum mechanics still can't answer. And this is what I wanted to show to. This is your This is what I wanted to show to the audience, dude. You pretend that I'm just it's so not stupid. Not my claim. It's and, your claim. Right, but this is what I'm saying. All the evidence shows what I'm saying is true, and we've yet to what evidence? even with your paradigm. You haven't cited paradigm, one piece of evidence yet. So Austin, what is it? I'd love you to do a full explanation with all the empirical measurements of how it is. Anyway, <laughs> he says it's the vortexing aether. Vortex within the ether, vortex, an ether vortex inside of it, or within a vortex of an ether field. Yes, he says it's the vortexing aether. So just a second. In Michelson Morley, the, the aether is stationary, and in Michelson Gale, the, the aether is vortexing. How can that be? They can't be both. You got to pick one or the other. He has no uh, answer. Well, he does sort of say that it's vortexing, but the problem with it vortexing is that all of these three axes uh, instruments measure it as 15 degrees, as if the axis, the center of the axis of the, of the vortex, if it's their vortex, is going through the center of the device. Well, that doesn't work because every device is in a different spot. Does somehow the vortex move to the new spot when somebody else turns on a, an instrument that measures the rotation? Of course not. They think probably that it's at the North Pole and the North Pole is a vortex. Well, if that were the case, then you would not measure 15 degrees per hour everywhere. You would measure the lateral portion of it where you're at. Well, that doesn't work. They don't ever measure that. And also Michelson Morley would have measured that as well. None of these things work. So what happens is Michelson Morley and Michelson Gale directly contradict each other when it comes to the aether. And Austin Witsit agrees that Michelson Gale measures sidereal rotation. And we don't deny the sidereal rotation exists contradicting the stationary earth. Well, thank you very much for that, Austin. I do appreciate that you misunderstand higher level physics because most flat earthers don't understand middle school physics. So it's, uh, you know, good for you, Austin. I do appreciate that. Anyway, I've got number two coming, but before that, Chatbox Travels. Hello, you can call me user 114, not uh, too many numbers. Measurements can also say it's still Mil Milka Milkison Mil Milkel Milkson Morley and Sane was confused and created gravity. Wow, that uh, that resembles English. Answer question with answer, please, and not sarcasm, please. You didn't ask a question. You just made a statement that was wrong. Mikey L thought not. Space. Full stop. All your thoughts and reasoning are someone. 
Full stop. S else it's such a waste. I ran, I ran out of full stops. Well, thank you very much for that. As I stated already in this video, Michelson Gale measured the rotation of the Earth, so didn't measure stillness, as you say. Yes, hello, my name's Colin John Wiles Wiz Winnistarsk. Win call me Colin. Still waiting on any globo, any at all to answer the question, how is it that they are full moons? Half moons and such. But there are no half suns or quarter suns. I guess the sun makes up its own rules. Wow, um, that guy? No, no. And uh, I'll let Del, Del, what do you think about this guy? I'm mentally ill. <laughs> Hola, amigos. Me llamo Lou Amoroso. That is Espanol for love bear. No need to refute unicorn farts. The conjugate induction and reciprocation of dielectricity and magnetism propagated by the medium of the ether is the basis and foundation of the existence of the entire universe. How convenient that dark matter is a complete mystery. Thank you very much, Mr. Love Bear. I'll just be waiting for the empirical evidence of this aether you speak of. Oh, I love the chat box travels. Anyway, the second part of this video is a conversation I was having with my friend, a flat earther, a friend of mine, good guy, kind of like him. Uh, he owns a pizza place called Flat Earth Pizza. Yeah, the irony. Anyway, <laughs> he was telling me that um, that he's he's going on about NASA. I'm like, I don't care, really care much about NASA. NASA didn't determine the shape of the Earth. And without NASA... The Earth is still a globe, but he just can't stop talking about NASA. So something that flat earthers do when they don't have content, you know, for flat Earth, because they don't ever have measurements, is to talk about something other than flat Earth, like NASA. So anyway, I get to talk about NASA sometimes. So he wanted me to look at some photos that he thought were fake. I said, well, all NASA photos have an ID. Send me the ID. Well, he didn't want to send me the ID. Instead, big surprise, he sent me a video by somebody else um, supposedly analyzing some photographs from NASA that are supposed to be fake. It was from Paul on the Plane from five years ago. <laughs> Paul on the Plane. He's so funny. So this was, uh, he, he took some photos uh, of, off the website of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Uh, something NASA put up, but they don't actually manage it. Somebody else manages it, but it doesn't really matter. It's It's NASA adjacent at the very least. So he put this, he got these pictures, he downloaded the high-res JPEG and put it into a photo analyzer and looked at it and, and found, oh dear, look at that. There's a big box around the earth. And oh no, look at that. There's different things about the noise of this picture than there, there should be in a single frame photograph. The problem is he didn't even read the description on the website. And conveniently for us, he included it in his video. In the website, it shows, it declares very clearly that it's a composite. So good job, Paul on the Plane. You discovered that a composite picture is a composite picture. Whoop-de-doo. So I told my friend about this, and uh, he's like, well, don't just keep watching the rest of the video. So, okay, well, I did. Nowhere in the video does Paul on the Plane even... A talk about the fact that on the screen it says it's a composite why is it surprising that a photo labeled as a composite is a composite if you want to analyze photos analyze a photo that nasa says is a single frame non-composite photo there are many there are around fifteen thousand of them from the apollo era alone Right, and those were taken on three-inch film, wet developed in a dark room, and the original photographic slides are in a museum in Houston, Texas. If you do, if it's not good enough, the high-res scans that you can get online of these, go to Houston yourself, look at them, bring your photographic expert, 
right? Bring along all of the forensics tools that you want to do. Scan them yourself so you can be certain that the scan that you're seeing online is the same or different than the one that you personally did. Lacking that, you can only look at what has been scanned. And there are multiple copies of scans of the original uh, photographic slides. My favorite is from ASU because the TIFF files are uncompressed and they are massive. Paul in the plane, I'll include a couple links to, to, to photographs that you can personally analyze. And I would love to see your actual analysis of it because you think, Paul in the plane, that you are an expert in photographic um, forensics. You go right ahead and you show your analysis of these. And, and uh, <clears throat> my friend, <laughs> hang on every one of Paul in the plane's words. Do, do go ahead and do that. But in the end, NASA did not figure out the shape of the earth. That was done thousands of years ago. And you don't need NASA, I don't need NASA, to figure out all of the things that we need to figure out about the Earth. I personally measured the radius of the Earth. I personally verified that the horizon never rises to high level. You didn't do it. You never have measurements. Never do. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Ryan. That was a, a very nice thing. And Paul on the plane, do better.